yeah, and generally, exam two should be more uh, easier to do, just because you guys are used to OCHEM and how to study. <clears throat> so I'm glad to hear that some of you guys had better grades. So this is going to be the alkene reactions. And we will also talk about, you know, Markov, Nikov versus Antimarkovnikov. So, right. so uh, most of your uh, like OCHEM knowledge before was mainly conceptual and then in exam two we started to introduce reactions uh, when there's a starting a reagent and a product okay so those four mechanisms don't necessarily show up in this unit it will show up in later uh, in OCHEM 2 in different uh, capacities but as far as exam, or not exam three, uh, just the last third of your class, it's mainly going to be individual reagents. Okay, there's no longer like four main mechanisms. It's going to be many multiple single reagents. Okay, but the main concept, um, kind of main concept, is Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov. Uh, as far as alkene reactions go. And another way to say this is um, Markovnikov is the most substituted. I'll just abbreviate as most sub versus least sub. Okay. <clears throat> so there are certain reactions that fall under these categories. And this is the example I'm going to use in most of these problems. Okay, it's this pentagon or yeah, cyclopentane with a methyl group and a double bond right here. Okay, and I use this example um, because there's a clear more substituted side and less substituted side. Okay, so to point it out, this is the Markovnikov side. Right, and I'll just abbreviate Markovnikov as mark equals most sub. And then in red, I'll do least sub. OK? So hopefully, this should just be a review. Uh, as this should be one of the first things that they teach you in lecture. So, Lisa. All right. So, the first few reactions you guys will learn <clears throat> are um, so there's in in this unit there are like specific names for each of your reactions. Uh, I won't necessarily talk about those reactions. Um, using names, but um, I will, so yeah, I won't use names, I'll use, uh, I'll just use the, the reagent, okay? Uh, give me one second to find my notes. <clears throat> All right. So first and foremost, um, I want to talk about the differences between uh, brominations. Okay. So, give me one second.
All right, so in last unit, you guys learned about PR2, HB. You guys learned about um, NBS. And yeah, that's it for bromination. So these are the free radical halogenations and they abide by like the radical rules. In this unit, you are creating a carbocation as your intermediate uh, because when the double bond attaches to the hydrogen, the a carbocation will either go to the more substituted or less sub substituted side, okay? So some of the bromination ones that you will need to know, and I'm not sure if you guys have learned some of these yet, but some of them, or one of them is going to be your two, uh, and then below the arrow is CCL4. And then there is also BR, just regular BR2. And there is also BR2H2O. Um, and of course, there is also HBr and HBr with peroxide, so H2O2 or any R2O2 group is uh, considered to be a peroxide. Okay. Um. All right, that should be it as far as the bromines. So let's go through all of these, okay? And once again, we're gonna use this for example. <clears throat> so remember, like I said, these two are free radical halogenations. So that means we are looking for places, our bromine will only attach to places uh, where a radical exists, okay? So let me write that down. So I'll just write radical. And NBS, as you guys know, is the same thing as BR2. So both of these, I'm going to put under the same thing. Uh, even though there's a double bond in here, we are not touching the double bond because that's strictly this unit and not last unit. Um, so remember, free uh, radical halogenation, the trend is um, benzylic, allylic, tertiary, secondary, primary, methyl, and then vanillic. Okay. Uh, B is benzylic, A is allylic, M is methyl, and V is vanillic. Um, so of these positions, we have a primary uh, allylic, secondary allylic, secondary allylic, and secondary, okay? Uh, and since you guys already done this, I'm just gonna, that's why I'm quickly running through it. Uh, but feel free to ask me any questions. Um, so between these two secondaries, uh, the way we figure out which position to choose from is we have to resonate um, from each position, okay? And I'm going to jump ahead and say that when you resonate from here, you end up with a radical on the tertiary carbon. When you resonate from here, you end up with a radical on a secondary carbon. So you're going from secondary to secondary. And then if you go from here, secondary to tertiary. And if anyone wants to see how that is, I can further explain, uh, but it should be fairly a review from last unit. So the final answer where bromine should go is at the bottom left, okay? All right, so, so, that should already be um, 
you guys should already know that information, okay? Now let's go to these two before we get to these three, because um, these are the most important ones, okay? This is hydroboration. Um, you guys also know hydrochloration or hydroiodation. All of these are um, the hydrohalogenation ones. I think that's the proper name for it. But once again, the name, um, I don't want to say you don't have to know it, like, like ignore it completely, because it does help in like kind of pairing the name and the reaction and like what it does. Um, and I'm not quite sure if like they won't include it on quizzes and exams. Okay, so just just to cover your bases, maybe learn the as well. Okay, um, like eventually at, at least. Um, maybe for now it's okay. So right, so HBr is hydroboration, and just to quickly run through like the mechanism, what happens is. Um, this double bond will attach to this hydrogen because electrons, you know, this is basically a negative charge. Hydrogen is basically a positive charge. Uh, so that's why they go together. Uh, and what you have left is a carbocation either at the more substituted or least substituted, OK? And that will be determined by whatever uh, the rest of the structure is. And bromine is a has a negative charge. Uh, okay. So bromine is going to want to go to the more positive side. Okay. Um, if you guys kind of wanted to relate to the old um, unit, uh, HBr is a weak nucleophile, and weak nucleophiles are SN1, and SN1 prefers tertiary carbocations compared to secondary carbocations. Um, does that kind of make sense why we put it here, not here? All right, perfect. So because of that, uh, this should be the most straightforward one. OK, so like I said, the double bond goes away. OK, and we place a bromine here. OK. All right, now, now that's that's done, we have, uh, so this same fashion, you can also see, um, let me see. So you can also see HCl or HI. OK? So everything uh, that I did with bromine uh, applies the same way for chlorine and iodine. OK? So now the difference is that HBr when paired with uh, peroxide, which is H2O2. So let me just type out peroxide, and peroxide can is usually a ROOR group. And that, for an example of that, is H2O2. OK? So just don't be alarmed if you see uh, any R O O R group, like they could do methyl O O methyl. Um, but yeah, okay. But like I said, once again, this only applies with bromine and not chlorine or iodine. Um, and I'm to be honest, I'm not quite sure why it's only bromine and not chlorine or iodine. Um, the way I can think of is like like Goldilocks, like too big it's not too small it's like just right i yeah i don't know um but you know once again this unit is very memorizable um but that being said there are a lot of conceptual you know points you can connect um but if science doesn't make sense you know when in doubt you can always just memorize if you want okay so 
the peroxide forces the bromine to actually attach on the anti-mark common cup side. So that's why bromine is going to go here. OK. So HBr, HCl, HI, just without any peroxide, will be Markovnikov. And HBr with peroxide is going to be anti-Markovnikov. Okay. And actually, hold on. Let me use blue for this. Uh, and if you guys have been to any of my reviews, you guys know I, I like to color code things just so it's easier for you guys and it makes learning easier. Um, so you guys might want to do it too. So I'll try to use you know blue and red to determine Markovnikov and anti Um Eventually we'll get to something called sin and anti addition, um, and I'll talk about that. Uh, actually, right here. Okay. So let me actually move bromine Br2 over here and Br2CCl4 here. Okay. Um, and because there's a lot of reactions in this, you know, last third uh, of the semester, there is mechanisms for each of them. I won't specifically go over all of them. I'll only go over the ones that I think are important. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to see the mechanism, um, you can ask me. Or the mechanism is always, you know, in the lectures in the PowerPoint, and of course also in the textbook. Um, it's not. I don't think it's like absolutely necessary to know the mechanisms. Um, because you you won't necessarily have to show it. At least I'm not. I I just haven't seen that in the past. But you know, you never know. Uh, always refer to your professors when it comes to that. All right. So when we simply only have Br2 or Br2CCl4, we are going to have two bromines on both sides of the double bond. Okay. Now, but the interesting thing is that these double bonds or these bromines are going to be in what we call anti formation or anti addition. Okay. And what that means is they are going to be trans. Okay. Anti addition means trans, and sin addition means uh, cis. And I'll write that down. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So don't get anti addition confused with anti Markovnikov. And then, and then sin addition means it's the same side, so it's cis. So, but we have two bromines, and they are going to be in anti-addition. Uh, so whenever we have anti and syn addition, this only applies to, um, I'll write that down. This only applies when we have two sub on the double bond, OK? So when we have syn and anti-addition, we will have Markovnikov and anti Markovnikov, because this only applies to a single substitution on double bond. And let me write that down too. OK, so one sub on the double bond. OK? Have you guys learned about this yet? Anti addition and sin addition? Okay. 
All right, so um, like I said, bromine 2 or BR2, we have anti addition. So I'm going to draw my bromines uh, opposite. So because I have a methyl there and I just assigned it a, a, a wedge, uh, obviously it could be an antimer of this, it doesn't matter. So we have bromine here, we have bromine here. Okay. Um, and then you guys might have a question on like what the best way to study for this like final unit is, um, because there's not really things you can just learn. It's because it is like you have to like there's a lot of reactions, so it could be overwhelming. But you just have to break it up in groups um, and just learn them and redo it over and over again until you get it and then move on to the next set of groups, OK? And that's what I'll do um, for the rest of the weekly reviews for the rest of the semester. Um, this is for both BR2 and BR2CCL4, OK? They both give the exact same products. OK? Now, does anyone want to guess what BR2H2O is going to look like? Um, okay, someone asked, why are those on wedges and dashes? Okay, so all of these are technically stereospecific. I'm just not drawing it um, for for some of the others. Well, not this, uh, obviously. But this one, um, I, I don't think there, it, this is stereospecific, um, but this one is. So you also have to have these correct. And this specific region, or both of these, in an anti-addition fashion, which is trans. OK? Now, on to Br2H2O. Uh, once again, is going be anti-addition, OK? But obviously, we're, we're going to add bromine on one side, and then we are actually going to add OH on another side, OK? Anytime you see water or yeah, just water, it usually means that there's going to be an alcohol present, OK? Um, and that's because, you know, hydro like water, like the H dissociates and you have OH as a nucleophile, etc. Okay. So anytime you see water and you're not really sure, don't put water as your substitu substituent put OH. Okay, water will never be a substituent. Okay. And between OH and bromine, OH will obviously be more nucleophilic than bromine. So it's gonna want to go to the more um so the more stable carbocation position. That's why we have OH right here as a dash on the more substituted side and bromine on the less substituted side. OK? All right. Any questions on any of this so far? We'll get into um, cleavages right after. Uh, just give me one second. All right, so I really like these four reactions because it's really fun. Um, so if, if you want to start getting your reactions, just group these as like bromination ones, OK? So the next group, quote unquote, um, is called cleavages. Um, and once again, we're going to use the same starting product or starting uh, structure. Okay. Um, 
I guess I can try it. Let me see. Just give me one sec. All right, so I drew all four. Now I'm going to draw uh, the actual reagents you have to know. Have you guys learned these yet, or you guys haven't gotten it yet? OK, so the first one is OSO2. And it doesn't have a um, thing underneath. The second one is going to be Camina 4 Coal. And Camina 4, hopefully, you guys have heard of this. It's potassium permanganate. Uh, and it's a fairly, it's a very common reagent uh, that's really important for OCHEM. So you'll use it in Oken 2 a lot also. OK, and the thing with this is uh, it's going to be cold or dilute or sometimes even basic. OK. Now, the, the other one, the third one, is also KMNO4. We have two KMNO4s, but this one is hot concentrated or acidic okay so that's the differences that's the difference between these two okay so depending on the, the characteristics uh your answer might change the product might change okay and sometimes when i say hot it could they they just give like the heat symbol um like that okay and then lastly we have ozone analysis, okay, which is just O3. And the solvents for ozone analysis is DMS, which is dimethyl sulfide, or zinc, okay? Uh, and sometimes they don't write DMS, they just like, they put like methyl, sulfur, methyl. But yeah, make sure you guys understand that it's the same thing, okay? So these are the four cleavages. Um, now, these first two are going to be weak cleavages, uh, and I'm running out of colors, but so, yeah, so these ones are considered weak cleavages, and I'll type that out. And what I mean by weak, you guys will understand. Uh, and then the bottom two are strong cleavages. Okay. And I'm not sure if this is like the actual term for it or if they, they even have a term. This is just something I made up just to make uh, sense. And just you have to be very creative in like mnemonic devices and stuff to remember uh, because there's there's a lot of reactions okay um, and like I said this is considered strong and sorry for the yellow I know it's hard to read okay. all right so for OSO2 and Kevin 4 cold dilute or basic it actually has the same uh, products, okay, and I'll draw that in purple. Okay, so we have our pentagon, and the double bond goes away, and what we have instead, actually, uh, it has to be a what? 
wedge here or a dash. Yeah, wedge there. Uh, and then I have two dashes or two wedges. Okay. Uh, for all the structures you see with zero chemistry, just understand that uh, it could be there could be an enantiomer of each other. So if you decide to put make this a dash, just make these into two wedges, and vice versa. Okay. Um, so yeah, we have OH, uh, OH on both sides. Okay. All right. And then there's actually a name for this um, that helps you remember. It's obviously because it's both uh, dashes. It's going to be sin addition. And then we have alcohols. So, and then we have two uh, two of those alcohols. Okay, so it's called syndiol. Okay, and that's for both of these reactions will produce the same product. Okay, and it's considered a weak cleavage because at the very least it gets rid of the double bond, but doesn't open up the ring like the strong cleavages do. Okay, and I'll show that. Okay. Um, okay, uh, I really don't want to draw uh, the strong ones in yellow, so I'm just going to draw in black. So I'm going to do the KMNO4 KMNO first. Um, so this one, you, you don't necessarily get rid of the double bond. You just cut it in half. Okay, so for both of these, because it's a strong cleavage, you're going to cut your double bond directly in half, okay? And when you cut it, I'll show that in red. When you cut it, you put a oxygen on both sides, okay? So there is a oxygen there on one side of the double bond, and then on the other side, there's also another oxygen. Okay, just like that. And then I'll fill in the rest of the structure. I know this looks a little bit weird. Okay, but it looks like that. And then remember how there used to be a hydrogen here? Let me actually draw that. Amino 4 is also considered to be a strong oxidizing agent. And I'll write that as well. So camera four is strong oxidizing. Agent. And ozonolysis is a weak oxidizing agent. Yeah, so, like I said, ozonolysis is a weak oxidizing agent, and chemo 4 is a strong oxidizing agent, okay? And what that means is these hydrogens that you see, and I'm looking at this specific hydrogen because it's connected to this double bond, okay? This double bond uh, at the top already has a methyl group. We can't further oxidize a methyl group. Um, well, we can, but in the sense we, we're not doing that. Okay, we're only oxidizing the hydrogen, or not oxid, or we are not oxidizing the hydrogen, depending on which of these. Okay, but like I said, KMnO4 is a strong oxidizing agent, so this H is going to turn into a OH. Okay, so instead of it being a um, a aldehyde, it's going to turn into a a carboxylic acid. Okay, and then to draw the ozonosis one, um, 
I guess I'll use the same colors. Sorry, there's just not enough colors. Okay, and I know it's very tiny, but hold on, let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, that's better. Um, let me fix this. See if I can stretch it a little bit. Okay. I'm just going to angle it differently, but you guys know it's the same thing. Okay. All right. So, just a reminder and just to recap on strong cleavages. Um, when there's a when there's a methyl here, uh, this double bond just the top double bond turns into a ketone. It stays as a ketone. It doesn't become an aldehyde or a, a carboxylic acid. But this bottom double bond turns into either a carboxylic acid or it becomes an aldehyde because we have a extra hydrogen. Okay. If there was a methyl group here, both of these would be a ketone, regardless of strong or weak. Okay. Um, and these are considered to be strong because they completely open up the ring. Um, and we are placing oxygens all over the place, okay? Whereas here, we're only getting alcohols, um, and we don't open up the ring like these ones, okay? All right, any question on the cleavages or any of these before? Um, someone asked, so for OS02 and KMNO4, the product is the same? Yes, the product is going to be the exact same. The product here is also the exact same for both of these reagents, okay? Oh, you're good. Uh, that's a good question. It goes to both things, okay? Uh, what you'll notice is some reactions will have the same product because there's multiple ways and there's so many reagents okay you're bound to have some similarities all right um yes it's always the same for these two okay yeah i mean obviously if it looks the exact same yes uh, but even though it's a different reagent with the same starting compound even though these are different reagents, it should still be the same. Uh, remember, like I said, all of these have an enantiomer of each other. So if you decide to put dash here, it could be wedge wedge. Okay. So just make sure in your answer choices, because it's multiple choice, uh, as long as these are in the same direction as in a sin fashion or a sin addition, and you have two alcohols uh, and there are alcohols it should give you this product. Okay. Let me see what else you guys need to know. Is there any reactions that I haven't covered yet that you guys learned in lecture? Um, obviously there's like oxymercuration that I can go over. So the last thing I'll cover before I end this review is um, two like alcohol ones uh, that are in Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov fashion. And let me write that down. So the first one is Mercury one, so it uses H G O A C and two. 
And under, in that same one, it also has H2O or methanol. Okay. And under that, you have NaBH4. Uh, actually, hold on. Just type it out. Let's move this here. Move this here. Just to get more room. Um, so, like I said, it has. Uh, the bottom one is NaBH4, and NaBH4, as you guys will learn, that is a reducing agent, which is different from a oxidizing agent, where we are adding double bonds and etc. But NaBH4, we will like remove like extra bonds, but that's later on in the unit. Okay, so that's the first reagent. The second one is Give me one second. Is pH three comma PHF. And then at the bottom we have peroxide H two O two and NaOH. All right, so once again, we're going to use the same starting compound, which is this, and there's not enough room to show it. Um, but I will draw both of them. Um, so, you know, uh, I placed it in this order because this one is also going to be Markovnikov, and this one is going to be anti-Markovnikov, OK? So it's just a different way. Uh, well, it's it's a different reagent, but you still get more common cover or anti more common cover. But this time, instead of bromines, you are using uh, alcohols. Okay. So I know it's a little bit tiny. Maybe if I zoom in, you guys can see it better. There we go. Um, OH is right here. And then... For this one, because it's anti-Markovnikov, it's going to be over here at the bottom. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't think you have to worry about stereochemistry for this one too. Uh, obviously, I would double check because it's been a long time for me, and um, like I said, different just have different references. So, and each semester they always change. So, you know, as far as stereochemistry, check with your professor. As far as regiochemistry, which is something I haven't talked about, hopefully you guys know what that means. Regiochemistry equals, like, position of stuff. Um, and stereochemistry, which you guys learned from unit one, is, like, um, I guess direction of sub and plane. That makes sense. Um, this is regiochemistry. This is stereochemistry. Okay. All right. So. That should be uh, most of the important ones. Um, there's also quite a bit more, but I'm going to just type it out and let you guys let me know if you guys have any questions regarding them. So there is also the H2 uh, PV. PT slash or nickel or PD. 
And what this one does, this is also a reducing agent. And at the very end, uh, the reducing agents, that's like at the last chapter. So I'll go over all the reducing agents, such as this one, H2 hydration, and uh, this NaBH4. But what this does, it basically gets rid of your double bond. Okay. And then another one that you guys will, you guys have been introduced is uh, something called MCPBA. Okay. And what this does, it, it creates, you go from a double bond. So I'll, I'll like briefly go over it here. So once again, the hydration one, you go from a double bond to a single bond. And for the MCPBA one, you go from a double bond to a triangle with uh, oxygen in the middle. Okay. This is called a. So MCPBA, that, this is called a peroxy acid. Uh, so don't get that mixed up with H2O2, which is a peroxide. So this is a peroxide. This is a peroxide. Okay. And also, if you notice, both of the ones that have peroxides are anti-Markovnikov. common So that's another clue. Okay. So you have to constantly find patterns and clues to connect to every all these reactions. Okay. Um, sorry, I know I'm throwing a lot of information, um, and this unit is kind of a lot of information because just there's like every reagent is different um so just be paid um so like i said mcpba is considered to be a peroxy acid and when when you react a peroxy acid on a double bond you get this triangle looking thing with oxygen in the middle and this has its own name also it's called uh, epoxide. Okay. This is called a epoxide ring. Okay. Um, all right. So from the epoxide ring, sometimes there is a like a reagent, like a part two to it, and that's uh, acidic water, which is denoted as H two H two O. Or actually, it's just denoted as H3O plus. Okay, well, there's different ways. And then from here to using this, uh, sorry, I know it's really messy. I apologize. Uh, you actually get a anti-addition of two alcohols. Okay. And you technically only get your your attacking with one uh, OH, but anytime you open up a ring, when you attack a epoxide ring, the other side, whether it's the more substituted or less substituted, the other side will always turn into a alcohol, okay? Um, and I will have to show that next time, just because we don't have, we're, we're covering other things right now. And you guys still have a little bit of time before you guys learn it. OK? Uh, like I said, these have to be an anti-addition. So imagine that's a wedge, and this is a dash. OK? All right, and uh, the rest should be just the cleavages. And. Uh, So there's actually two more that I haven't covered, and I'll draw it right here. So it's called Simmons Smith for the first one. Um, actually, I'll just keep it here because I really want you guys to have everything in categories. And next week, I'll make this simpler uh, and more organized and I'll put them in categories so you guys can see it better. Um, 
Okay. So this is CH2I2. And underneath it is zinc, copper. And then the second reagent is called CH3Cl3. Then underneath it is NaOH with water. Okay. So both of these do two different things. And we're going to use this as our starting products. And let me zoom in once again. Um, can I make this smaller? OK, I can make this smaller. Nice. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're gonna move that there. We're gonna move this here. Let me this a little bit bigger. All right, so all right, so once again, we are going to use this as our starting product for both of these. As, as always, OK? Um, and I put it here because this also will create a triangle, OK? So we have like three triangle reactions, OK? Um, your epoxide one and these two, OK? So the end result for the CH2, I2, zinc, copper, that will create a basic triangle with instead of instead of epoxide ring you have carbon in your triangle okay also by the way anytime you have a triangle it will always be in syn addition okay they will they have to face the same direction uh, because they are connected they're facing opposite direction it, it's just it's just a mess, OK? Uh, especially when you try to make it like 3D model, it has to face the same direction, OK? So it has to be cis or syn addition. Uh, and this one just creates a regular triangle, OK? This is, don't get that mixed up with uh, proxy acid, MCPBA, because that has a oxygen in it, OK? This is a epoxide ring. This is uh, the Simmons-Smith reaction. Okay, now that is slightly different to our next one, which also creates the triangle, but it has chlorine, two chlorines coming off the point on the other side. Okay, uh, okay, I might need to type this up. Okay, so let me draw, let me draw this. So it has two chlorines off of it. Let me see if I can make this smaller. OK, one right there, and the other one right here. OK, so it forms a triangle here, and then it branches off into two. OK, so these three go together. Um, I guess these two go together, and these two go together, and then all of these kind of quote unquote go together. All of the bromination ones you want to group in your mind. All the cleavages obviously you want to group in your mind, and then between the cleavages you have two and two to make it even easier to group in your mind. And obviously, don't forget Markovka versus anti Markovka. This is your general basic con concept for this unit. Anti and syn addition is also really important um, cause, because it's multiple choice. They will most definitely give you uh, the same answer choices, but with different stereochemistry. OK, so don't get tripped up on that. Look on your PowerPoint or um, your textbook for the exact uh, like stereochemistry. Uh, I'm pretty sure these are right, but if you want to fact check me, go ahead, go like, please do. Um, and yeah.
Does anyone have any questions regarding any of this? This should be all of like chapter eight uh, reactions, like all alkene reactions. Okay, so next week I will go over chapter nine, which is your triple bond reactions. And the following week after that, I will go over alcohols and probably reducing agents uh, as that's the last uh, important meeting. Uh, and let's see, so today is November 3rd. We have November 10th and November 17th. I'm not entirely positive if you have November 24th also, uh, but I will let you guys know once I do know. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming as always. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll be here until everyone leaves.